How's it going everyone? Sean here from Raw Technique Studios. This is my second video on how to set up a home studio. This one's going to be much more detailed. What I'm going to do is take apart everything and put it back together explaining what it is, how to plug it in, what it's used for, and then go step by step on what you could buy in order to set up a whole home studio. Now my previous video, if you want to check that out, I'll have a link uh, right here or in the description as well and you can see the basic setup of you just need a computer, a DAW, an interface, and a microphone. So if you just want a quick overview of what you need to get started you can jump into that video. If you want to stick around for this one I'm going to completely take this apart and put it back together and show you exactly how to do it. Alright let's jump into it. Okay, so now we're completely bare on the desk. All we have is a simple computer, and we need to build up from this computer to have a complete studio. All you need next on your computer is a digital audio workstation. Uh, there are also referred to as DAWs. They make it to where you could program music into them, as well as record into them, mix inside, and master. So these are programs like Pro Tools, Reason, Sonar, Cubase, and there's so many more to choose from, so go ahead and look at all those and pick which DAW fits your needs best. So I opened up Sweetwater. Uh, this is where I buy most of my gear. So let's go to Computer Audio, and we're going to look at the digital audio workstations, the DAW software. So as you can see, there's a lot of options here. We have Pro Tools, we have Reason, so let's just click on Reason to see what to look for. Now when you open it up, First off, just look at the price and then scroll through, read the features, uh, read the reviews to see what other people who actually own it think about it. Uh, just make sure it has everything that you need and the features as well as look at the tech specs uh, just to see if it's even compatible with your computer. Okay, so once you have your digital audio workstation set up, then an option is a MIDI keyboard. So what I'm going to do is show you how to plug it in. It's really simple and this is to be able to play um, virtual instruments that are in your computer. So there's plugins or virtual instruments in Pro Tools, Logic, all these different sounds and to be able to control them you could use a MIDI controller to input that uh, performance. So this doesn't make sound by itself, there's no speakers on it, there's nothing like that. All it does right here is plug in via USB. So what we're going to do is connect it and get that set up. Alright, so I'm grabbing the USB here and I'm just going to plug it into the back. And then I'm going to take the other side of the USB and just plug it into the computer. Alright, so as you can see, just by plugging it in, it turns. Uh, you just flip the switch to on. So if it's off, you just flip it over, and you're ready to go. You just open a program and make sure you install the newest drivers off the website of whatever controller that you bought. This is M Audio controller. So I went to mAudio.com and downloaded the newest drivers for the Auction 49, and then you're good to go. Back on Sweetwater here, we're going to go down to Computer Audio and Control Surface. We're going to be checking out some MIDI controllers. Now there's different types of controllers, but let's focus on the keyboard controllers for this. And let's look at the compact controllers first. So these ones are good because they're really small. You can take them wherever you want if you want to throw them in your backpack. But if you're looking for something a little larger, then you could go with something like I got, which was a 49 key. 
And let's go down to the M Audio Auction 49. Check it out. So take a look at prices first. Check out the controller. Make sure it has all the knobs and faders. Or if you're just looking for a keyboard, you could look for just the keys. Uh, look at the features. Make sure it has everything you want. And then go down to tech specs. Make sure it's compatible with whatever software you're using it with. And also uh, check out the reviews because these are people who have actually owned the product so they could give you advice on how their experiences are with it. Now I'm going to introduce an interface into the recording setup. So we have a way to record uh, from a microphone into the computer and into the digital audio workstation as well as hooking up monitors so we could hear the playback. So let's start with the interface and put that together. So I have this interface here. It's a Fire Studio project. Now, I started with a four channel interface. I've upgraded to this one to get eight channels. Just go ahead and pick out one that has the amount of preamps that you want on it. Uh, there's several interfaces out there. Some are Firewire connectors like this one. Some are USB connectors. So just go ahead and research the um, interface to see what you need and what you could use. Okay, so let's check out some audio interfaces. We're going to go to computer audio and audio interfaces. And there's several different types. Thunderbolt, there's Firewire, USB, PCI, and so on. So let's just uh, check out the Firewire audio interface for now. And you could sort this by price if you'd like. So you could just search by your budget. And you can scroll through, check it out. Uh, make sure you're getting something that is going to work for you. If you're looking for something with just two channels, you go with a smaller interface. Uh, if you're looking to record something like a drum set and you want more inputs, then you're going to need to find something with more preamps on it. So let's see what we got here. All right, let's go down to the PreSonus Fire Studio project. And first off, does it fit your budget? Uh, if it does, then you could check out what it has to offer. Just look through the features. Make sure everything matches up for your computer and software and everything. As well as check out the reviews to see what other people think about it. If the preamps sound good, if they sound bad, most likely it'll end up in those reviews. Also, some of these, uh, some of these interfaces come with free uh, DAW software. So if you need some recording software, some of them come with free stuff. So make sure you check that out in the features as well. Okay, so I have my interface here. And to get it connected, what we need to do is connect the FireWire to the computer and as well as connect the power outlet. So let's go ahead and get that started. So it's just the three prong outlet and I'm going to plug that into the back here. Alright, and then it also came with a firewire connector. So I'm just going to go ahead and connect the firewire right there and then the other end plug into my computer. Alright, so that's the basic setup with an interface. You just need to plug in your the power strip as well as the firewire cable. And then that makes it to where you now have access to record into this and get it onto your computer. So let's go ahead and turn it on with the switch in the back right here. And as you can see, it's uh, turning on right here. And when it's blue, that means that uh, everything's good to go. Uh, also, make sure you go online, go to your manufacturer's uh, website, and download the most recent drivers to make sure it's all updated and ready to go. All right, so here's our the back of our interface. Everything is set up for the interface to be running. The firewire is connected, and the outlet is connected as well. And the next step is getting speakers plugged into it so we could hear back through nicer speakers 
or better speakers instead of having to hear through the computer speakers. So what I'm going to do is connect these quarter inch cables and I'm going to plug them into the main outs on my interface. So right speaker, left speaker. And then the other side of these, which is also a quarter inch, is going to be plugged into the um, appropriate speaker. So make sure the left is going to the left speaker and the right is going to the right speaker. So let's plug those in. Okay, so what I'm going to do is put this uh, in a different spot so I could pl put my monitors up here and get them all plugged in. Okay, so here's our monitor. And I suggest using these uh, Orlex foam pads. It just makes it so the monitor is not right on the desk and you get a better bass response and the speaker just sounds better overall. So I'm going to set that up right here. And what we're going to do is connect the cable that was in the back of the interface and we're going to put the other end of it in the back of the monitor here. So let me turn around the monitor so you can see. All right, so it's a balanced input right here, so we're just going to plug in the other side of it right here. And then we also need to plug in the outlet. Okay, so that's it. And we're connected to our monitor. And you're just going to do the same thing for the other monitor to get that set up. So let's take a look at some uh, studio monitors. We're going to go with the active monitors because if you were to go with the passive ones, you would need a power amp for that. So active, you just plug it into your interface and into the power outlet, then you're ready to go. All right, so we're going to search by price in here, just scroll through. Uh, always start with what your budget is and then see what different monitors there are in your budget that you could compare. Alright, so let's check out these Mackies. Go through them, check out the features, look at the tech specs, make sure everything's as you want it. and then also check out the reviews to see what other people think of this uh, studio monitor. Alright, so now we're going to be connecting a outboard compressor. So let's put it in the rack and then we'll see how it's connected in the back. Alright, so it's all connected to the rack. Now let's just go around to the back and see how to connect it to the interface. Alright, so here's the back of our compressor. And what I did was just plug it in right here with, to the power strip. And now we need to get it set up so the interface on the bottom here, uh, down there, is going to connect to the compressor up here. So here's a diagram on how to connect everything to an outboard compressor. So this input one on the compressor needs to connect to the channel one on the send on the interface. So this will be sending your audio from your interface to the compressor. And then you have to get your output and send that back to the interface. So you're going to plug that into the return channel one on the interface. And then on channel two, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to get your input on the compressor, and that's going to go to the channel 2 send. And then to get audio back from the compressor, you're going to go output to the return channel 2. And that makes it to where you're getting audio going into your interface through its preamp out to the compressor. It's being compressed, and then that signal is being sent to the return of your interface and then out the firewire into your computer. Let's take a look on Sweetwater for an outboard compressor. I'm going to go down under Studio and Recording 
and I'm going to go to signal processing and go over to compressors. Now you can look by price or what's popular. I'm just going to jump into the one that I bought. We have the Pro VLA2 here. Uh, some compressors are two channels, some are one. Uh, just take a look at it, make sure you're getting what you're wanting to get. Uh, look at the features and jump down to the tech specs. So just take a look at the reviews and see what other people think about the product before you buy it. Now we're going to connect a external hard drive. So I'm just going to set it right here. And we just need to plug in the USB to it. Right there. And a power strip. Like so. And then that one's good to go. Alright, so we're on Sweetwater again. We're looking at external hard drives. So let's go through under computer audio and go down to hard drives slash storage and then we're going to check out the external hard drives. You could search by price if you'd like or you could just uh, go through what's popular. So I'm going to click on one that is like mine. We have the GPT-50. This one that we're looking at has four kilobytes of space on it. So that'll give you more space for all your audio recording and not clutter up your computer. All right, one more thing that I'm going to connect. I'm going to connect a TV to my computer so I could have uh, dual screens. All right. Now I'm connecting the Samsung here. What it is is a HDMI pl uh, wire and it's plugged into this Rocketfish connector and the end of it here is like that. And it just goes into the back of my Mac. All right. Then we can turn on the TV. Alright, and now we have two screens. So my computer screen and TV are connected. 